How do you explain to a five-year-old girl that she has a baby growing inside of her that would be due in seven weeks? How did she even get pregnant in the first place? And how is it possible that she started menstruating when she was just three years old? This is the amazing but sad story of Lena Medina and how she became the world's youngest mother ever. If you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your support. Lena was born in 1933 in Ticrapo, Castrovireyna province in Peru, one of the poorest villages in the country. Her father, Tiburello Medina, was a silversmith and her mother, Victoria Losea. They were simple people and she was one of their nine children. A few months after her fourth birthday, her parents noticed a little growth in their daughter's stomach. At first, they counted it as a minor issue that would sort itself out. If anything, young Lena was healthy and happy as any other child should be. Even if they wanted to do something about it, their village lacked the medical sophistication required for a case like that. So they ignored it altogether and hoped it would go away. However, in a few weeks, her stomach kept getting bigger and after six months, it got too big to ignore. Concerned villagers were asking questions and they had to do something about it. They were left with no choice but to seek medical assistance. So Lena's parents took her to see a physician in the nearby city of Pisco, Peru. This led to a shocking diagnosis. Lena was seven months pregnant. The doctors couldn't even believe it themselves. How do you explain that a five-year, seven-month and 21-day-old girl would be expecting a baby? It just didn't make sense. Young Lena looked lost in the situation. How do you tell a five-year-old girl that she has a baby growing in her. Well, after thorough research, they discovered that Medina had a very special genetic case called precocious puberty, a condition that speeds up the transformation of a child to an adult. Mostly, it happens before age eight for girls and age nine for boys. Girls would start developing bigger breasts and wider hips and menstruation would soon follow. Boys grow facial hair their voices get deeper and a lot of them would have to cope with enlarged genitals. While her parents noticed some of these body changes in Lena before the pregnancy, they probably dismissed them, thinking it wasn't something serious. Neither they nor the doctors in all their years of practice had ever seen a case like Lena's before. A few weeks later, the dreaded moment came sooner than expected. Lena was in labor and the question on everyone's mind was, how is a little child with a tiny body going to push a 2.7 kilogram baby out of her body? Well, there was no way that was going to happen. It would be a suicidal attempt. Therefore, the doctors opted for a cesarean section and amid all complications, it was a successful delivery. She gave birth to a healthy baby boy and named him Gerardo after her doctor. She took her baby to her family home in Peru and he was raised believing that Lena was his sister. It wasn't until he was 10 that he got to know that his 15-year-old sister was in fact his biological mother. And as Gerardo grew, the story of a five-year-old girl who gave birth continued to make headlines and would attract all kinds of attention to the family. It even earned them the international recognition as newspapers and magazines all over the world covered the story. And one thing everyone wanted to know was, how did Lena get pregnant? Who is the father? And was it rape? Well, considering she was below the age of consent, the act was considered an assault, and you would never guess who the first suspect was. Tiburello Medina, Lena's father. Tiburello was a simple silversmith who depended on his service to his local customers to fend for his family of 11. What could have possibly attracted him to his four-year-old daughter? Well, it was a little town and Tiburello was the only adult male who was always around Lena. However, this was far from enough evidence for the police to pin him down with a crime as serious as child rape. 
Still, authorities arrested and detained him briefly while they continued with their investigations. He was released after no evidence was found. It didn't help that Lena was too young to tell. Even with an adult body, she was still a child. More like a child trapped in an adult body she never asked for. However, one thing was clear. Lena was raped by someone older than her, and people wanted to know the truth. The media offered the family many opportunities for an interview, but they turned all of them down. They were not comfortable with the kind of attention that came with Gerardo's birth. The family couldn't boast of much, but they were never ready to trade their daughter's story to hungry media presenters. They were even promised an all-expense trip to the United States in exchange for a tell-all interview, but they still wouldn't budge. This made a few people believe that the entire story was a hoax as they were not comfortable talking about it publicly. But there were medical accounts by the doctors who were in charge of her case and a clear x-ray of her abdomen which revealed the bones of a developing fetus inside her body. The closest the media got to this case was when a specialist in child education at Columbia University traveled down to Lena's village and would publish a few of his direct interactions with the case. His name is Paul Koask, and Paul, just like a thousand others, was very desperate. From his observations, he found out that Lena didn't just have an adult body. She thought like an adult too. She was way above the normal intelligence limit for her age. Another attempt was made by obstetrician Jose Sandoval. He wrote a book about Medina's case and reported that Lena often preferred to play with dolls rather than her child, which almost sounds normal for every six-year-old girl with no idea of what responsibility means. Unfortunately, Lena's son Gerardo lived a short life. In 1979, he was diagnosed with a bone disease and after a long struggle, he lost the battle and died at age 40. Only two photographs were taken while she was pregnant and only a low-resolution picture ever made it to the internet. They were clear that they wanted no media attention and Medina would stick with this decision for the rest of her life. Where is Medina today? Well, she moved back to Peru after the delivery of her child and would go on to live the quiet life that she so wanted. She was employed as a young adult by one of the doctors who handled her case and with the money she got from her job, she was able to put herself and her son through school. In the early 1970s, the Wonder Mom got married to a man named Raul Gerardo and she would have her second child with him. Although life was not easy for them and it was a struggle to put food on the table each day, the paid interviews were an option Lena was never going to consider. The last we heard of Lena and her husband was they were sharing an apartment in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Lima. If she's still alive, the youngest mother in history would be celebrating her 90th birthday this September. And that is the story of how Lena's childhood was ruined forever by a man that was never found or prosecuted. The perpetrator of the evil act is still shrouded in mystery to date. As for Lena Medina, aside from her ruined childhood and the pain she must have undergone during the act, her unfortunate predicament gave her the world's attention, which she had never asked for. And she did go down in history as the youngest mother in the world, which is also a title I'm not sure she would have wished for. Now it's your turn. Have you ever heard about Lena Medina before now? Who do you think the father of her child could be? Let us know in the comments below. While at it, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.